everybody it's that time again oh well it's time for more of this anyway um as you can see since last time i have got the quadrant in um i have slid the locking pin in and at the moment it's just held in with some petroleum jelly although it's fairly tight fit i just don't want it to fall out when i um Put top cover back on. I've got the um, vertical lever and the fingers in place. Um, that little spring down there you can just see was missing. Uh, the control cams were pinched together in such a way that the, um, the fingers here weren't sliding easily between them, which was causing all sorts of weird problems. Anyway, that's all back together. So, got the O-ring again held into place with a bit of petroleum jelly. And I am ready now to put the piston back in. If you're working on these, remember the long studs go at the back, the short studs go at the front. You need to get this support bracket in place before you do anything with it because otherwise you will never tighten that bolt up. It's got new rings in there, piston's been honed lightly. Um, these springs are being held into place with cotter pins or split pins, whatever you want to call them. So we are ready now to drop the piston into place. Right, it's all in now. It's one of these jobs where you need about three pairs of hands because you've got to locate these at the same time. You've got to slide that up through that gap and not do what I've just done. You've got to line up the adjusting screw here with that little clevis there. Um, all in all, it is not it is a bit of a fiddly job. Anyway, it's done. Before I go any further, I just wanted to show you. It's difficult to see here. Come on, focus. Difficult to see here how those fingers fit in the control cams. So I'll show you on a diagram. That may make it a little easier for you. Again, you're looking at this upside down. Uh, or so rather you're looking at the right way round, whereas I've been filming it upside down. But what you'll notice that on this finger here, there's a flat on the back and that hook there. So that roller is on the control cam where the hook fits around. And that roller is actually on the draft control lever that rolls across the back of that flat. So you have to make sure that is located between those two rollers and with position control, where the finger has a fork on the end, it has to go on top of that roller on the control cam and underneath that roller on the position control lever. Uh, it's a bit fiddly, but you can get that vertical lever in place. And once you've done that, it's actually relatively straightforward to slide the support bracket and the cylinder back in. If you've not got that located correctly, and that located correctly, it is very difficult to get the cylinder back in. Right. Just to make sure that that clevis lines up with the adjusting screw, usually I just get a pair of vice grips onto the edge of the clevis, pull, down until the thread lines up and then that should thread in nice and easily. Well, following on from the last video, I've had a lot of questions about what this thing is and what it does. Bolts on there, this plunger is activated by the vertical lever there, but it doesn't have any connections to any hydraulic pipes or pressure or anything like that. So what is it and what does it do? Well, it's called the dash pot 
and it's used to even out the response that's sent down to the vertical lever. Okay, you remember this from an earlier video, response control lever. Response control lever bolts into there and on the inside it has, come on, this little dog leg on the end and when you slide this slider one direction or the other you can see on the side it says fast and slow. Okay, so when you slide it, it just moves this little dog leg on the end, which presses the button on top of the dash pot. Now this dash pot is actually, under, in normal operation, is below the oil level inside the transmission case. So what it does is it acts like a shock absorber. And when it's doing that, it's full of oil. And when you press on that, it squirts oil out from inside. And the rate at which it squirts oil out from the inside is determined by a needle valve on the bottom of this plunger. So when you have response slow, it's pushing that down and restricting the flow through the needle valve. When you have response on fast, it's allowing unrestricted flow through the needle valve. So Okay, you've all seen this before. I've welded that washer on top of the stub of the guide that was sticking out there and managed to pull it out. So next step is let's make a new guide and let's get it in there so it doesn't fall out. Okay, this R-clip is pretty much the same diameter as the bent guide. So let's get a bit of that and see what it does for us. Right, that's more like what it's supposed to look like. Not perfect, but a lot better than that anyway. Okay, so there's your dash pot back in with a new guide. You'll see there's a slot in the vertical lever for it and a little hole in the... Uh, Support bracket, just a quick tip for anyone who ever has to do this again, and I hope you won't because, well, you just haven't got a life if you do this kind of thing. Put a bit of string around the uh, plunger on top of the dash pot when you put it in because otherwise it'll fall out and all sorts of springs and valves and stuff will fall out and disappear through cracks in the floor and it will ruin your day. Okay, I think that's enough of that for today anyway, so... If you're still watching, thanks, and see you next time. Bye.